Here in Austin, on Wednesdays, we run. Yeah, we run a lot of days, but Wednesday is a special run. We call it the Full Bird. The city of Austin constructed the Longhorn Dam in 1960 to form Town Lake. The city needed a reservoir to serve as a cooling pond for the Holly Street Power Plant, which operated from 1960 until 2007. But I digress. Why is it called the Full Bird? Well, later in 2007, the Austin City Council passed a resolution authorizing the renaming of the reservoir from Town Lake to Lady Bird Lake in honor of Lady Bird Johnson, who had died earlier that month. That's why we call it the Full Bird. And it's a denomination of 10 miles. How beautiful is that? A full bird, 10 miles. As you can guess, a half bird would be five miles. We were really excited to come across this kind of new running lure, nomenclature, whatever you want to call it. But we enjoy it here. There's water stops along the way. And that's why on Wednesdays, we run. Not just any run, but a very special run. And that run is called the Full Bird because we run a full loop around that beautiful body of water that surrounds the Austin downtown with our friends at an extremely aerobic pace to get some great miles in. Not just any miles, but miles of the Full Bird. Hope you've enjoyed this little lesson about the naming of that sweet, sweet body of water that we call home. And after every run, we sure do like to pop up in the back of the Atreyu Mobile and indulge in some Waterloo sparkling water, maybe even a Rambler. We've taken kindly to the bubble waters. They just feel good after a run. Anyway, there's Gordon. Looking fresh, Adam, Nick, Andy, Sam, Trey, Lena, we're all there. All the usual suspects, come join us anytime at the Full Bird. I tried interviewing people after, but honestly, I don't know what to ask of them or, or say on site, so we'll get to that part later. We did, though, have a really great run, and I really love this group of people that we've gotten to know at the run group. Oh, shoot, I gotta stop my watch. All right, so now it's time to get on home. I call them a cash flow analysis. Uh, see how much money we have, how much we need to save, and how much we can spend. It's not a lot right now. Everything is contingent upon the race model launch coming up. I've got high hopes for it, but if it doesn't do great, then we'll have less money. If it does all right, then we'll have just enough. If it does great, then, you know. Before I start my day, I like to get a little bit loaded with caffeine. I'm just gonna walk you through. I don't know how to say this. Cuvier, 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 quave. Anyway, I like to pour around 17 grams espresso bean that way I get 17 grams in and 17 grams out of this here grinder very passionate about this espresso setup and I take it very seriously so here I like to distribute the load of grinds evenly upon arrival nothing fancy but what you're looking for is a clean puck and that's why the prep it's always worth the few extra steps. Like here, using this distribution tool, working my way around that puck and 
before I do one little knock. There you go. And then the tamper. About 20 pounds of pressure evenly on it. Little OCD about the, uh, the cleanliness of the puck, but that's always gonna be good in the, in the shot process. We've been using this company called Volman's, a local mi milk purveyor. Lena doesn't drink milk, but I do, and I drink a lot of it. So I do about a 20 to 25 second extraction, and today I'm gonna do a 25 second because I just want a little bit more espresso. The idea here is about 17 grams going in, and the final product of the espresso is uh, gonna be double that weight. So around 34, in between 30 and 35 grams of espresso at the end. So double the weight with the water. Steam in the milk was taught to carefully listen for that right sound of aerating the bubbles to get a nice silky, creamy mixture. And then pour in that sweet victory. I'm not about latte art, so I don't really mess with it. I'm more looking for quality. Whew. I've got a box here. It's a big box. Um, this box comes from the supplier. It's got shoes in it. I've been working on new colorways, and I thought that I would uh, explain a couple things. For the past year, I've been trying to minimize the amount of colorways and maximize the efficiency of the business. And I called a friend the other day who's much more intelligent than I am on a probably a marketing or consumer facing side and maybe just even a logical side. Guy's fantastically smart. And uh, I've known him for a long time. He's one of my brother's best friends. And he said, why would you want to, uh, I think he said it like, you get in a car and the brake pedals aren't gonna be in the back seat. You're never going to eliminate colorways from footwear. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, maybe we should eliminate, we should have black and white and everybody's going to love it and they're going to resonate with that. And I think, I think I kind of went, took it a little bit too far, which I often tend to do. And so now I'm back on a, well, let's see what we can do within reason. Maybe if the company's got any success in the next few years, we can expand our colorways. And then I started thinking maybe that is the equivalent of putting the brakes and the, you know, the gas up where the driver is sitting because people are always gonna to wanna to represent themselves through colorways. Makes total sense. I have some samples. Um, this was a fun one. I don't know if anybody is a Frank Lloyd Wright or architecture kind of fan. The Cherokee red color um, that he always used on the floors and um, some of the adornments throughout his his work was in this beautiful terracotta colored um, earth tone, just absolutely gorgeous. And I was thinking to myself, that would be a beautiful color for an outsole. And so came up with a terracotta style uh, base that kind of can go into that. Depending on the medium, whether it be a foam or a rubber compound, there's always going to be variations of the shade. So this one kind of came out really beautiful, I thought. Daily Trainer 1.2, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Uh, made the logo uh, quite a bit smaller uh, and used an overlay on there that I think is going to be really slick. Wanted to make the both the lateral and the medial logos much smaller, specifically because the ethos of the design of the Daily Trainer is a daily driver. And I, when I was thinking about the corporate mark being so big, I was thinking, I bet you we could afford a much smaller mark and more of a practical use case for wearing with jeans and shorts after a run, during a run, all of it. The new pull tab with the Honor Simplicity styling on there, um, which I'm kind of pumped about. Trying, and I've been testing actually a new rubber compound that's substantially more durable. How much more durable? I always err on the side of conservative and I don't like giving hard and fast numbers before hundreds of people test it out in 
the actual commerce, but at the same time, I have found that it's quite a bit durable on two pairs that have hit the 200 plus mark. It's just a beautiful compound. So uh, I'm really excited to get this out. That's why I gave it the 1.2 designation of, uh, you know, the software upgrade, including a more durable outsole and actually a lining on the inside right here that was um, a very sheer uh, material that was uh, on the substrate of this mesh. And I wanted uh, to see if we could also enhance the experience and the longevity of the upper as well. So we're trying a different substrate and that's also proven to be great during testing. Not as many rips right here and not as many rips right here and on the toe it takes uh, quite a bit longer to actually wear through. Really pumped about that. There's also, um, some people would call it a gusset. Um, I don't know why people are calling this a gusset. It's, I would think of it more as a feature, like an anchor that's attached from the tongue to the strobel board. A gusset would be more attached to these eye stays right here, kind of from the tongue up to the eye stays. And uh, anyway, I don't want to get too far into the weeds with that. And in this round, we have finished the beautiful sock liners. That is this new liner. Beautiful ETPU mold. Very pumped about how these don't require adhesive to the strobel board. Snaps right in, very beautiful presentation. Quality in the details, just working every iteration that I can. We're gonna include this on probably every shoe coming off the line for quite a while. Decided not to go with the perforations under the foot for now. I have asked them in the original die cut model, we had about six, like one, two, three, four, maybe eight uh, little pinholes right here, maybe a, two millimeters wide. And there were like three right here. So I'm gonna see if we can just pen those extra little holes. Now getting into the colors that I promised that I'd show you. I'll show you the white. I've decided not to go with the I did two versions of the white, and I'll show you the difference. One of them, the first version, had a white TPU. When we built the race model, we're actually sitting on quite a bit of clear TPU, so I wanted to know if I could make use of that material and not just let it sit collecting dust in the factory in our corner of the supply room. And I am pumped to see this clear TPU looking just so beautiful. Subtle, but that's the design ethos of the Daily Trainer. A sleeper hit that can do it all, including that terracotta colored outsole. Um, and I just think that this shoe is just gonna be an absolute contender. Of course, we'll have, we always come out of the gates with what's called a team color. I've always loved the primary colors, and when this came off, I knew something was a little bit off about it. And it's not this cool uh, iridescent TPU, which I think is bad to the bone. Uh, so we're gonna use some iridescent. I've always wanted to include some of that. So we're gonna get a roll of iridescent TPU and start to use it in the designs. Um, this one's got the red outsole with the, uh, I made sure to design in the outsole what's called a color dam. And that is a feature on the mold where you can actually colorize like a specific piece. So I save it sparingly and, uh, but I think that color dam looks really cool. The primary colors of that look really crispy, but something was off. The weight of the colors was a little bit off and I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, man, this is like, it was just jogging my mind. Like what's, what's the difference? And Lena walked in and she had replaced the laces. It's gorgeous. So like, I think that the for whatever reason, this racing stripe blue right there is just a, it, it kind of accentuates that racing stripe blue plus the colored like eyelets right here. Uh, and it makes it look less uh, playful and a little bit kind of meaner, especially with that iridescent TPU. So kind of, she kind of solved the, the problem there. 
a little bit collaborative, but a lot of Lena into the mix here. She wanted a pistachio color. She, I was like, all right. And this one came out very crispy. With that iridescent TPU and, oh my goodness, like how bad to the bone is that? Let's get back on the map and start putting some flavor back in there. This is that terracotta colored outsole. We're gonna give that a shot and see how it resonates with folks. So those are the daily trainers. Of course, we need to work on the base model. So the base model three, what's it gonna be? And frankly, I love the bottom of the base model two and the one so much that nothing's gonna change, period. I just think it's a perfectly balanced running experience. It's my favorite shoe to run in for most of my mileage, especially low intensity. Um, it's a very misunderstood model. It's a very misunderstood product ethos. It's hard to sell. It's a lot, people return it because it's not as durable as other shoes on the market. And for that reason, it's just a very perplexing, but when you get it, you get it. When you understand the base model, you understand a tray you. The new base model is not this. It's not the small logos, because we did a small logo. That just came out too plain. It will include the medial logo of the base model three, as you can see right there. It will not have a heel counter like the Daily Trainer. It will include, yeah, right there, clear TPU. Let me show you, because I had an earlier sample of the base model three. So a, a silver TPU logo on that with the team colored eyelets right there. Um, again, the same midsole, outsole combo. When thinking about the corporate mark on the base model, this thing is a tool. Like, let's, let's wear the name proud on the tool. I think that, that the product philosophy of this demanded a really cool, like it, it, it demanded the full size name where the daily trainer is like, let's make it incognito and make it fit in in all types of different applications. This one is a statement. That's my product update. I thought that I'd take a quick second and explain how this process goes. Because typically when we release something like this, people are thinking that it's gonna come out in like a few days, maybe a few months. This is a work in progress. Typically footwear brands are looking at a 20, 24, 25 schedule right now. And we like to look uh, about six to 10 months into the future. So my goal is to think about the race model launch. Contingent upon the race model launch and contingent upon uh, the sales figures that we produce from that and the demand of our new racing shoe will help me decide when I will have the funds to go through and make the new order for the what's hoping to be the spring release 24 January, February, March, quarter one of next year with these new revisions of these new colorways. And from then, we'll be on hopefully by next year. My goal is to get to a spring and fall. Like, wow, it took us like three or four years to even start thinking about maybe we can get to the point where we can have a spring release and a fall release. Who would have ever, at one point in time, I think we launched like the week before Christmas on a new colorway or like when subscriptions launched. And then we did like a midsummer push for uh, the V2 base model. Just, everything's been wacko. And the goal is to get on a seasonal basis. And the first way that we can do that is a proper launch with the race model. Um, production is now coming to a close on the race model. It was set for August 1st, but then it got pushed back two weeks and now it's getting pushed back to the 22nd. So that'll put us at the soonest, like in early October, like first week of October release date. September would have been golden. So October is kind of like, all right, you're still in the money zone. Any later, like a shipping delay would, um, there'd probably be a little bit more friction in the buying experience because people are probably already getting their race shoes by then. But that's the game that we always play. It's never easy. We don't have control over the shipping process. What's going on in the Panama Canal apparently is 
there's delays, there's anticipated delays, there's port closures, there's, ah, there's all kinds of stuff that can happen. Regardless, I've learned to just play the game. I used to get, uh, every time waiting for orders, like I used to get, uh, I used to break out into hives and I had to go to the emergency clinic like three times for breakouts of hives just like waiting on the orders and now I just kind of go with the flow. Of course it's super stressful and and honestly it's it never gets any easier but managing that stress has just become a little bit more um, of, a, of, a, of a personal equity or acumen that I've picked up uh, that that I'm a little bit better at managing that stress now than I used to be. Um, all that to say, these new colorways and these new revisions, the Daily Trainer 1.2 and the Base Model 3, I'm looking at, fingers crossed, that early 2024 Q1 release contingent upon the big bad race model Fear the underdog, exceptional fast AF, shoe, into fall racing, let's go, let's have a good time. A lot of exciting stuff here on the Atreyu Horizon. Thank you as always for following along. Thanks for joining us on our 10 mile run today. Thanks for coming with me on my coffee making journey. I don't know if this is entertaining. I sure hope it is. So grateful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for everything. Thank you for allowing me to do what I do every day. I have the coolest job in the world. Huge goals are a series of tiny victories strung together in a meaningful way. That's what I always say. That's what I'll always believe. Adios for now. We'll catch you next week.